France insists on sending Western troops to Ukraine, Russia promises catastrophic scenario. The Elysee Palace, after French President Emmanuel Macron's statement about the possibility of sending troops from Western powers to Ukraine, insists that Kyiv's allies should discuss this issue. As the source explained to CNN with his statements, Macron signaled his Russian counterpart, Vladimir Putin, about his determination and desire of France to prevent any victory of the full-scale Russian invasion. The source stressed that the French president did not talk about the actual departure of troops and no decision was made on this, but there are all sorts of things that were ruled out two years ago and which are no longer ruled out. Macron has not ruled out the possibility of sending Western troops to Ukraine in the future after a meeting in Paris, emphasizing that there is currently no consensus among allies. A number of European states and NATO have since stated that they do not plan to send any troops to Ukraine. The potential deployment of NATO troops to Ukraine will lead to a catastrophic scenario and could be interpreted as a declaration of war on Moscow, top Russian Senator Konstantin Kosachev has said. The vice speaker of Russia's upper chamber, the Federation Council, offered his take on remarks by French President Emmanuel Macron on the possibility of sending troops in a telegram post. The approach exhibited by the French leader carries a risk of the situation developing into a catastrophic scenario, Kosachev warned, stating that the move would not be tolerated by the Kremlin. This is the line beyond which it's no longer just NATO's involvement in the war. This has been happening for a long time, but can be interpreted as the alliance entering direct hostilities or even as a declaration of war, Kosachev wrote. The senator's comments echoed a statement made by Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov, who said the move would make a direct collision between the US-led bloc and Moscow not only possible but actually inevitable. Bandera, Stalin, Princess Olga of Kiev, Musk and Orban. What Putin told Carlson about. The widely publicized interview of Vladimir Putin by American journalist Tucker Carlson turned out to be nothing more than another repetition of the Russian president's well-worn rhetoric. Putin talked about Stalin, complained about Bandera and Shukhevich, accused Ukraine of attacking Russia and mentioned Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban. The interview began with a half-hour interpretation of Ukraine's history by Putin. He reiterated his narrative that Ukraine was created by Vladimir Lenin, but now, according to his version, Ukraine was formed by Joseph Stalin as a result of World War II. Putin devoted 25 minutes to presenting his own history, despite the fact that the interview itself lasted just over two hours. During this historical briefing, the Hungarian Prime Minister was unexpectedly mentioned. Putin claimed that Hungarians in western Ukraine supposedly wanted to return to Hungary, but when Carlson asked if he had sent such proposals to Orban, he replied in the negative. Putin also mentioned Princess Olga of Kiev and Vladimir the Great during his discussion with Carlson about how Russians, who are deeply rooted in Christianity, supposedly very loyally treat people of other faiths and Russian authorities have always carefully treated other cultures and religions. Of course, Putin and Carlson did not bypass the topic of the war that Russia unleashed in Ukraine. Putin made it clear that he does not want the war to end because he has not achieved the goals set. In this context, the Russian president again mentioned the so-called denazification and this time even explained its purpose, not forgetting about Stefan Bandera and Roman Shukhevich. In addition, Putin told Carlson a tale about how Russia was not admitted to NATO, the idea of creating a joint missile defense system for Russia, Europe and the US, which he allegedly presented to former US President George W. Bush and about the fate of American journalist Gershkovich, who is currently behind bars in Russia, blaming the Central Intelligence Agency for the sabotage of the Nord Stream pipelines. He also praised the owner of SpaceX, Elon Musk, calling him a smart person with whom it is necessary to find common ground and cooperate. U.S. struck Houthi cruise missiles and drones in Yemen. The U.S. has launched a series of strikes against Houthi cruise missiles and surface drones in Yemen, according to the U.S. Central Command. The U.S. Central Command CENTCOM forces conducted seven self-defense strikes against four 
Houthi unmanned surface vessels and seven mobile anti-ship cruise missiles that were prepared to launch against ships in the Red Sea, the U.S. Central Command said. It is reported that the U.S. military detected these missiles and unmanned surface vessels in Houthi-controlled areas of Yemen and determined they presented an imminent threat to U.S. Navy ships and merchant vessels in the region. These actions will protect freedom of navigation and make international waters safer and more secure for U.S. Navy and merchant vessels. Since November of last year, there have been ongoing attacks by Yemeni Houthis on trade ships in the Red Sea, often associated with Israel. In January, the terrorist group launched its most significant attack. The US and British military repelled an attack in the Red Sea in early January. At the beginning of January, the US and Britain conducted powerful strikes against Houthi-related targets in Yemen. This was in response to the constant attacks by the Houthis on civilian ships in the Red Sea. On January the 28th, a Houthi drone in the Red Sea attacked a British military ship and the next day the Yemeni Houthis claimed to have attacked an American destroyer. However, the Pentagon refuted the militant's claim. Also, on February the 6th, it was reported that a British cargo ship was attacked by the Houthis in the Red Sea.